listening to Coffee and Conversation with Recovery Advocate Network, the nonprofit organization that strives to address the staggering disparity in resource availability for individuals suffering from mental health disorders, processing disorders, addictions, trauma healing, and sexual identity challenges. Together, we strive to end the stigma associated with these challenges so that true healing can begin. Welcome back to Coffee and Conversations Between the Lines Blog Club series. Get ready for a unique experience in episode 68, where the talented Brian Gaskell will bring Joshua Young's powerful blog post, Rebuilding Trust to Life. After graduating from the prestigious SUNY Purchase Acting Conservatory in 1993, Brian starred in Aaron Spelling's Milrow Place spinoff, Models, Inc., Next, he moved to a contract role on the daytime soap All My Children. Then he moved on to the supernatural soap opera Port Charles. From there, he had many other contract and recurring roles on daytime television and guest starring roles on primetime TV. Brian currently plays Seth, an alcoholic struggling in recovery on The Young and the Restless. He will soon star in the romantic comedy drama A Reluctant Heart. You can learn more about Brian in the show notes. Between the Lines episodes are written by guests who prefer to share their stories using their written voice instead of their interview voice. If you would like to share your view via a blog, please email joshua at blog at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org. Now, please remember the views expressed in any blog are the author's views, and the purpose is to provide a safe place for the author's voice to be heard. Just a quick reminder about Recovery Advocate Network, or RAN. RAN's mission is to support individuals who are dedicated to their recovery journey, but are facing challenges due to insurance loopholes. We are on the verge of funding our first bridge grant, which will provide crucial financial assistance to those in need. Your contribution, no matter how small, can make a significant difference in changing and saving lives. We are so grateful to have you as a part of our community. So consider visiting our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org and clicking that donate button today. Okay, so what are we waiting for? I know you were stoked to hear this blog read by Brian. So fill up your coffee, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Written by Joshua Young. Read by Brian Gaskill. Throughout my years entangled in the grips of alcoholism, the art of lying and withholding became second nature to me. It was a coping mechanism, a survival strategy, and ultimately a self-inflicted wound that caused immeasurable pain to those I love most, my wife, family, and friends. As I reflect on this, I'm confronted with the harsh truths of my actions and the difficult task of rebuilding the trust that I so carelessly shattered. This post is a raw and honest exploration of my battle with deceit, the reasons behind it, and the steps I'm taking towards healing and restitution. Lying for me wasn't just about hiding my drinking habits. So with a multifaceted tool used to manipulate my reality and the perceptions of those around me, I lied to avoid conflict, to create an illusion of control, and to shield myself from the judgment I feared and expected from others. Each lie, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, was a brick in the wall I built between myself and the world. These lies ranged from simple untruths about my whereabouts to elaborate stories concocted to cover up my drinking. I withheld information about my financial irresponsibility, the extent of my drinking, and the inner turmoil that I was experiencing. In my mind, these lies were protective measures, but in reality, they were destructive forces that eroded the foundation of trust and integrity upon which my relationships were built cost of my dishonesty was steep. My wife, the person who stood by me through thick and thin, 
bore the brunt of my deceit. She was left to question not only my words and actions, but her judgment and the very fabric of our relationship. My family and friends, too, were hurt by my lies as they watched helplessly from the sidelines, unsure of how to help or intervene. The more I lied, the more isolated I became, trapped in a cycle of guilt, shame, and alcoholism. Coming to terms with the damage caused by my lies has been one of the most challenging aspects of my recovery. Acknowledging the pain I've caused and the trust I've broken has required a level of honesty and vulnerability that I had long avoided. It's a painful process, facing the people I've hurt and admitting the full extent of my actions but it's also been a necessary step in my journey towards healing and making amends. Rebuilding trust is a work in progress, and it's a path filled with challenges and setbacks. Trust, once broken, is not easily repaired. It takes consistent effort, transparency, and time. I've learned that apologies, while important, are only the first step. The real work lies in changing my behavior, in proving through my actions that I am committed to my recovery and to being a person worthy of trust. This means being honest even when it's uncomfortable or difficult. It means following through on my promises and commitments, and it means making amends, not just with words, but with actions that demonstrate my dedication to change. It's a delicate balance, navigating the path towards forgiveness and trust, and it requires patience from both myself and those I've hurt. The journey of recovery and rebuilding trust is ongoing. There are days when the weight of my past lies and the pain they've caused feels unbearable. But there are also moments of hope glimpses of forgiveness and the slow but steady rebuilding of relationships that I once feared were irreparable. I'm learning to forgive myself, to understand the reasons behind my actions without excusing them, and to embrace the vulnerability that comes with honesty. Yes, it's a humbling process, one that has taught me the true value of trust and the strength required to rebuild it. As I continue on this path, I hold on to the belief that change is possible and that the relationships damaged by my actions can, with time and effort, be healed. My journey of recovery is not just about abstaining from alcohol. It's about becoming a person who lives with integrity, who values honesty, and who is committed to repairing the harm caused by years of lying and withholding. To my wife, family, and friends, I offer not just my apologies, but my commitment to do better, to be better. The road ahead is long and uncertain, but I am dedicated to walking it with openness, accountability, and the hope of restoring the trust, the trust that I once took for granted. joining us today with your coffee and conversation. We hope you've been encouraged and learned something from today's story. To learn more about today's guest, please check out our show notes for more details. Now it's time to remember to like this episode, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to ensure you do not miss future episodes. Recovery Advocate Network envisions a world where individuals with mental health challenges receive comprehensive and effective treatment without the worry of financial burdens to themselves or their families, all without the stigmas often present in society. We are proud that every individual work with RAN does so on a 100% volunteer basis. You can support the mission by making a financial donation via PayPal or Venmo. 
or email donate at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org if you would like to donate items for our next fundraising auction. Please visit our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org to learn more. Now, stay in the loop about upcoming events, future episodes, and more by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all major podcast platforms. As a reminder, the experiences and advice expressed in this episode are the host and guest's own personal stories and do not represent the opinions of any organization mentioned. RAN is passionate about opening the doors for all voices and experiences, not just those expressed in any particular podcast. If you want to share your experiences or expertise, we encourage you to be a future guest by emailing us at podcast at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org or submit a blog by emailing blog at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org. We also encourage you to comment on the episode so that we can continue to provide content that is most beneficial to the community. How do you do that? Visit our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org and in the top right corner, click that comment button and comment. So listeners, what do you need to do? Pause what you're doing, subscribe, follow us, Please give us a like and a five-star rating, write some meaningful comments, and most importantly, share these episodes with your friends. You never know whose heart you will touch, so please be a part of a reason someone has new hope today. If this episode was triggering to you, we encourage you to contact your support system, therapist, national and community support groups, the Global Crisis Text Line by texting 741-741 and or if in the U.S. dialing 988 to reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. If you're in the U.S. and need additional resources such as shelter, support group resources, transportation, food, and or a safe confidential path out of physical or emotional domestic abuse, please call 211 or visit www.211info.org for assistance. Now, we know you are very busy and we are grateful that you said yes to sharing time with us today. If you stuck to our three C's of engagement and listen to the full episode, then visit the podcast section of our website and leave the comment about the podcast and you'll be entered to win an autographed copy of one of the books from one of our book club series, as well as a coffee and conversation coffee mug. So thanks again. Until next time, back to your coffee.